this time in the pin my late number four and I think it's the final one uh, I'm gonna start at what I think could be the most challenging project of this uh, pimping uh, thing let me explain some previous owner raised this headstock with about 25 millimeters which means that also the tailstock had to be raised with 25 millimeters but here there's a problem when they made this plate here in fact the fit is not really what it should be the angle of this uh, uh, tailstock system and I will show you on the blackboard is not really correct so I plan to make a new bottom plate the base of the bottom plate I have to make looks a bit like this it is 110 40 and 160 long I take my magic little scale and I can tell you that uh, 160 160 millimeters is a bit over 6 inch and the width of the bed total width will be four and a quarter inch width length okay now of course the bed of my late is this model so I have to cut this out Ooh, it's not good it's a bit better the angle of 30 degrees after I have to make two cutouts one here one here to receive the tailstock now I have no idea how I get I am gonna measure this distance uh, sorry 40 you can go no need anymore this distance and how I can measure this correct angle this height is about 10 millimeters so I need to put some straight something on it so I can measure the angle just to be sure and I can measure the distance between that point I will mark it between this high point and this high point here we have a magnificent overlook to the late bed and what I meant with finding the right angle is between this angle and of course the other side this angle here we have a bit more than 10 millimeters so I'm really not sure how I gonna measure now these top corners are rounded so taking a perfect measurement between two points that doesn't exist could be quite a challenge too I think I found the right, right piece this one is a bit over 110 it's 40 millimeters thick and it's way too long so I am gonna clean all this uh, rust off and cut it to length to clean up and rough out a part like this one normally you start on the top surface flip it around 180 and then you have a good reference surface flat on the table and you can square up and work to size the four sides and then as a finish we do the last big surface will be perfectly parallel to the already finished surface that's on the bottom side I'm not gonna do that because I have to build a sort of fixed jaw of course this part is way too big to put in a vise so first I'm gonna work these two small surfaces I'm gonna square it up 
with this side which is uh, flame cut but it's more or less square so that will be my reference for the moment after that I'm gonna do these other sides the part is uh, fixed on the table with my homemade clamps nice and square I set the stroke length at uh, 160 millimeters that gives me a cutting speed of 15 meters a minute at 60 strokes a minute now this is a bit low but when I'm gonna do the other sides I need this 60 and not 100 strokes a minute so I put in my extended tool holder to be sure to clear here this uh, dovetail on the bolt it works no, not a problem I put in a roughing tool it's a round nose tool that I use for this uh, hardened stuff here this uh, scale and cast iron change of plans to cut this surface which is of course this side I have to feed down now on this machine there's no automatic down feed so I spent a few hours in a uh, high position to crank this uh, thing up here the tool slide of course uh, that's not a good idea now in this table there's two uh, tapped holes so I put two little studs in here I'm gonna drill two holes in this plate and fix it right here of course a little bit lower first I will clean up a part of it drill two holes put them on the studs and then with the shaper of course will clean up this side so I will be sure that this side will be square with the table and parallel first I gonna check if indeed the slide is uh, square I will do that so that means that I can put my ah, it's heavy I can clamp my workpiece this way against this plate and I will sure it will be square with the table so this face will be parallel with the table and square with the table so I can use the automatic feed to do this will be much easier to make this plate I draw the lines and uh, I already drilled the holes in it uh, my idea is to leave a little gap here this is the table the shape and this will be my back plate comes this way so if I put my part in place and chips will not interfere with or uh, burr or something will not interfere with this little corner here now when this plate will be finished there still will be of course this uh, hole in here it's a bit useless but what to do you know what let's say it's for ventilation to trim the tool slide to have it perfectly at 90 degrees with the table I suppose uh, everybody already seen it but you never know so I put my little machinist square fixed on the table with a clamp put my dial indicator and then I move up and down and I turn the whole slide to have it perfectly square I just touched off and then you can see if this touch off line and the drought line are parallel that's a very easy way to square up a part like this one the first part is finished I'm not gonna bother to do this uh, size here because I think 
this plate is a bit too thin I have to make another one one day maybe uh, in another life because I think this one gonna bend a little bit so this is just a one-way project now if I bolt my plate up here, well tight and I'm gonna work after this surface because I trimmed the tool slide this surface will be of course in line with the rem and square with the table I put a stop here so if I have to take the part out and put back in it will be I hope repeatable and also it will prevent the part from being pushed out I did a little bit clean up on uh, this face while the part was horizontal like this it didn't clean up completely but it's gonna serve me as a reference I made in Germany clamps ah, this one the other one I don't know where it's made but this one made in Germany I think I'm gonna give it a go with the shear tool. This is a roughing tool, it uh, performs extremely well. The finish is uh, for, a uh, for a roughing tool is uh, more than perfect, and the shear tool is not far away. So all I have to do is take this out, turn around, put back in. ready to share the four external faces are finished I'm ready to cut this face just to clean it up and after I'm gonna flip it around 180 and do the first uh, official features that I need on the lathe so this will be the upper part and the lower part I'll turn around do first now I had to invent a little bit bizarre setups to do this between my uh, parallel and square wall here there's a couple of parallels I pull the part against my square wall with the made in Germany clamps and then clamp it down to the table with these two so I'm gonna cut a little bit take this clamp off move it a bit continue to cut until here take this clamp off put it the other side and then finish this surface surface and then this uh, negative uh, dovetail system idea in this part I was thinking of uh, some bizarre kind of uh, setups and I don't know what but in fact if I use this vise it's just a little bit small five millimeter small some time ago I made this bigger jaw for it so if I take it off and I put back the original one 
which will come about here my part will fit in this vise it will be way easier to work there's a little bit of a problem with this vise as you can see this side is nice and clean and here's still the scale so the thickness difference between this side and this side is about a half a millimeter so let's say there's some kind of little problem while using this vise so I'm gonna take it off again and change again plans that's a lot better I had a little bit a uh, drastic solution to my little uh, problem so I drilled two holes in the part of course I checked if they're not in the way for something else uh, that's okay and then bolted down and I put this uh, repeatable fence here so I can take my part off put it back on now I draw some outlines here I put my table stops in place and now I'm ready to rough out this shape and then after we will do the finishing touch much better I think it fits well there's uh, almost no gap between the top side here and here the angle seems correct so now I have to cut out these two uh, slots here or corners or whatever you want to call it and then uh, drill the holes and tap the holes they need but I think I'm gonna do that in a second video because this one is getting a bit too long now maybe I can tell you now my little secret how I did to find out the exact angle of this uh, dovetail system it's a negative dovetail I'm gonna put it down well in fact there was no system what I did I did put the tool slide of the shaper up 30 degrees cut out and then came here to give it a try uh, so it was not enough so I put the tool slide at 30 degrees in 30 minutes and that was the right angle I just had to cut out the right width that's all so no measurements no fiddling around with special tools just cut out give it a try cut out again and after the third time things worked 